Hey everyone, welcome to Value First, the PLG Sales Podcast, a show where I interview sales and growth leaders who share their secrets on how to grow revenue at SaaS companies. Today, my guest is George Soto. He's the head of content at Reprise, the demo platform for SaaS. He's also the podcast host of Demo Diaries and a thought leader in the PLG space. George, great to have you. How are you? Thank you so much. You know, I'm flattered by your statement around thought leader in the PLG space. I, I just been, you know, doing startups and engaging these kinds of things for like my entire adult life. So, like until recently, I, I didn't know who the hell I was outside of being a startup person. So I, I appreciate it. The other thing is I've have had a chance to like talk to so many practitioners and experts. Uh, yeah. particularly this year around product-led growth. So was able to tie a bunch of things together. So I'm, I'm excited about it, obviously, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you're very involved in the space. You know all the companies out there. You're an advisor to many, to many companies. So I think it'll be an interesting discussion because you're really in the know of, of what's going on. But before we get into product-led growth and product-led sales, why don't you just give a quick background about yourself and about Reprise? Yeah, well, uh, George Soto or Jorge Soto. In Spanish, it's Jorge, right? My dad. My bad, here. my bad. Not not there in terms of pronunciation. No, you know what? It's um, but I do go by George, right? Like even my brain defaults to George. But yeah, I've been doing startups for about 20 years now. Started my first one in uh, undergrad in the Wi-Fi uh, 802.14 space. So. Uh, for for the hardware geeks out there, um, but then got into like the Web 2.0 internet based stuff uh, when I launched a social network for travel around the time that I was getting out of graduate school, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, I was trying to clone Facebook, and uh, yeah, that was the fun. No way. Yeah, I was trying to clone it for the purpose. Well. It was like clone the actual product, right? If you look at it, it looked like the re one of Facebook. If anyone remembers out there, it had the side nav and the boxes. It was pretty ugly, but uh, yeah, we were we just changed the colors and then added functionality that was specific to the travel vertical. Anyways, that thing didn't work out, but I did learn a lot, and that was sort of my uh, introduction to the internet. Yeah. And web-based products. And then I got into SaaS and that made more sense for me just being like a salesperson. And I think it was like a lot easier for me to um, sort of control customer acquisition, right? With B2B versus B2C at that time. Uh, and then, you know, in, in terms of like reprise and by the way, you know, started a bunch of companies and, and all that stuff, been part of a couple of cool ex uh, exits, um, not as a founder, right. but as an early employee, but reprise, I joined reprise last year uh december of last year i think i was like employed like number three or something like that or something like that i'm not quite sure but my buddy joe caprio shout out to joe love you joe uh was one of the um, co-founders of the business and he had been keeping me updated with you know the fact that he was working on this demo product and i was like well what is this thing but demos are cool right and they suck usually so uh, in any case, I ended up joining as an AE early on because I've always been in sales and then uh, transitioned to essentially be our first marketer, but uh, with a focus on content and thought leadership, being like the evangelist type of person. Yeah, amazing. Amazing. So we'll, we'll get to demos because it reprises the demo software. And I think demos are, are crucial in the PLG sales motion. In a, in a specific way. Um, but before we get to that, product like growth is a term that's being thrown out there and very sexy right now. It's a, it's a, like the AI of five years ago, but it's we're getting to introducing sales into product led motion. Why do you why don't you why do you think product led sales is important and what is in your mind product led sales? What's what is it all about? Yeah. Well, I was chatting with Kyle Poyer over at OpenView a couple of weeks ago and you know, was interviewing him for one of the podcasts, the product led revenue show that we have. And my you know, my question was 
to him straight up. Like he's, you know, the, the expert in the space, open view created the, the category essentially. And uh, what is, you know, my question was, what is product led growth or product led X? And, and he simplified it in a way that I thought, it, you know, I was pretty excited about it, made a lot of sense, which was, it was just any time that you are able to give the prospect uh, your product to interact with or touch or feel, et cetera, before making a decision, right? Before making a, yeah. a, a purchasing decision. So product-led sales, there's a variety of reasons why it's so powerful um, and it's like super hot right now. But essentially like without the unit economic, you know, uh, discussion, without getting into customer acquisition costs being, uh, lower they should right <laughs> I mean having it having the motion start off programmatically uh, without having to you know go through the old school like direct sales or sales that model obviously should be cheaper but um but I think it's like at its core is improving the buyer experience right so allowing your prospects to this to really dictate the buying experience which we all want to touch and feel product right before making a decision yeah and we want to see the product be, you know as early as possible right so allowing them to really dictate that buyer experience um as opposed to us forcing buyers down a particular path the yeah. other thing that i wanted to to kind of point out and obviously uh you know blinks is is part of this uh this you know, revolution is the data, right? And that's really the core thing, like PLG or product-led product sales or product-led revenue, or et cetera, whatever you want to call it, um, is nothing in my opinion without the data, right? And so your ability to now listen to in-product signals, intent signals, et cetera, uh, that your users, and that's another shift, right? Like you know, changing the mindset that, you know what, these are users of your product now that are in a sales motion, right? As opposed to like us thinking only about them as prospects. You know, this is like yeah. what product always thought about in engineering, users, 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 right? So, so being able to listen to your users' behavior, right? What are the types of actions that are increasing a, the propensity for a prospect or user to convert to a you know, a paid customer, right? If if the user does X, Y, Z, that ends up meaning that, hey, you know what? It's likely that they're going to convert or um, or grow or expand their usage of the product, right? If they don't, then what do we do to drive that, right? Assuming they match our ICP. Yeah, talking about data, because you've you mentioned the importance of data in the product-led sales motion. How would you go about, if you were an early stage company, how would you go about what do you look for? What do you track? Because I think it's an important uh, thing to talk about because you can overcomplicate it really quickly, but usually it's just about product qualified leads and product qualified accounts and, and main milestones that you reach. So how would you go about tracking and what would you track and what would be your first step in terms of getting that data motion for your product led and for your sales team? Yeah. Well, the caveat is that like, as opposed to maybe marketing triggers or scoring and that kind of stuff, like the MQL old school model uh, that uh, I don't want to say old school necessarily, like because it's still applicable to this day, right? It's really more about expanding and saying, okay, well, we have an inbound channel, we, we do outbound, but now we're going to expand to product led, right? And um, and so you know, in terms of data, it's really specific to your product. And that's one of the beauties of it. Like it may be some of the simple stuff like, okay, well, they signed up, right? Well, do, why do we care if a user signed up? Well, you know, that's a question the organization has to sit down and the organization being like product marketing and sales or product and the revenue team. I know we've bucketed it now. Uh, product might roll up to revenue one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a that's an interesting thought. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but like, okay, let's just use the very simple idea or data point of oh, X user signed up to your product. Well, what is it? 
why does it matter? Well, it might matter if they're on a target account list, right? It certainly matters if they match your ICP parameters, right? Um, so what does that tell you? Well, you know, you have to have that, uh, that you know, user, that part of the user journey uh, mapped to some sort of whitelist or, or uh, some sort of data source to be able to identify that, right? Otherwise, does it matter? It does, right? But, you know, you don't want to have your anybody focused on just random you know, signups, which is what we've historically, whenever we have tried to go product led uh, sales leaders, right, then we're just like, you know, s sending a bunch of signups. And then we, our reps are like, Oh, my gosh, you know, the last 20 e leads I've looked at or signups I've looked at are like college kids or like unqualified stuff. So I yeah. think that's the first thing. The other thing is, okay, well, what are it's going to take some time, right? If you're an early stage company getting going on this, you know, you have to experiment. You have to very much look at it uh, from a product perspective. Think about y yourself as a product manager, um, really putting that hat on and saying, well, over time, what are those actions that end up you know, showing a propensity to convert. So this might be something like inviting other colleagues, right, to your account, um, uh, setting up certain functionality, completing your getting started, uploading some Trying out premium features. Yeah, absolutely. You know, those sort of things. Exactly. Yeah, I think, and I think people over overcomplicated it at first, but it's, it's really comes down to, in my opinion, to what's your aha moment? What's the moment that you can, with the most certainty, link to revenue creation? And just start with that. Track your, let's say if your aha moment is 10 notes created in your tool, well, set that up and track that. And once that that uh, that is reached by customers and they fit your ICP, well, engage sales. I mean, we've, we've all seen the stat that uh, the best product like companies only focus sales on less than 50% of their users. I think that's a, that's a really important notion. So it's a, it's a great point. Talking about demos. So once you, once we identify, let's say a product qualified account in our, in our funnel based on key product action, let's say the aha moment, they fit our ICP. You want sales to get involved. Um, and at some point you'll get to a demo. I want to talk about demos because Reprise is a, is a great demo software, but PLG sales all about being contextual, being a consultant alongside your users. So how would you integrate a traditional flow into a product sales motion and are demos hurt? Can demos hurt sometime? How would you frame a demo so that it fits with really the intent of the product land motion? Yeah, this is a, a sticky subject because, you know, historically, at least like the way that I was trained and I think like most of us have been trained historically is do discovery beforehand and then use that insight that you're able to derive from the discovery to then craft the demo, right? And so it, it may be at certain times that uh, can happen on the same call as this, let's say like the first call, right? Um, or that might happen the second call, right? And so, you know, I think that that's with the way that we've looked at it in the past. Now, why is that the case? Well, you know, there's some operational stuff too, right? Like your ability to get a customized demo for a first call, especially if it's like pre-qualification, um, you know, is, is tough, right? The Just getting a demo spun up was a very difficult thing. Certainly getting one that was like personalized or tailored uh, was a whole new animal that most of us like couldn't do anyways, right? Even sales engineering organizations had never been that sophisticated. You know, the times yeah. change, tools like us. So, you know, in, in terms of like, how does it affect the motion? I mean, you know, there can be a couple things, right? So the first one is, let's say you have <clears throat> early on, hopefully you'll be able to understand what vertical company size, that kind of thing, you're, the, the prospect that you're talking to um, is, you know, is within. And so one thing that you can have is like off the shelf, you have a set of micro demos or what folks Peter Cohen called Ar Harbor Tours, right? And these are just three to five, you know, six clicks to an aha, right? Yeah. And, um, and you take it off the shelf and then you can use it. 
And so let's say you have a 30 minute call, right? A qualification. This is maybe whether you're a full cycle uh, salesperson or like an SDR uh, or even just maybe an AE doing more, a little deeper if first AE qualification. Uh, you know, you can, let's say 30 minutes, you can dig in for 15 minutes, you know, assuming you've done your homework and you, you got as much pre-qualification data as possible. You spend about 15 minutes doing some qualification. Um, and then you go into the uh, micro demo, right? And you're like, hey, by the way, you know, hey, let me show you a little sneak peek of the product. I have kind of a hardware tour I can show you. And that's now tailored and customized. Obviously, that, that can affect the uh, sales velocity in a positive way, right? Um, the, the other thing that I know that uh, we were doing, at least when I was carrying a bag, and Joe Caprio was showing us this, was giving the prospect the sort of keys to the car or, or you know, the steering wheel and saying, Fred, thanks so much for taking the time uh, to chat today. You know, uh, you know, let me tell you a little bit about Reprise. By the way, you know, what intrigued you to sign or to like reach out? Oh, you know, I don't know. We're looking to do more better demos, et cetera. Okay, cool. Awesome. Fred, quick question. Uh, should we like, you know, maybe take some time to learn a little bit more about what you're looking for? Um, I can tell you a little bit more about reprise in, in depth or, or, uh, or maybe I can just go ahead and show you a, a quick demo right now and we can use that to frame the rest of the conversation. Right. So like, that's like that kind of statement there flips, this world on its head, right? So, cause it's now like, holy shit, well, you're gonna go ahead and show a demo right away. Well, what I'm doing is giving the prospect the ability to, um, you know, to drive the way that they wanna experience this. And I, yeah. I tell you what, like, I, I can't imagine, like I never received a uh, response that suggested they wanted to, you know, do the qualification beforehand, right? Like they were always, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, let me show you the product. And then always inform the rest of the, the conversation, right? Uh, because if I showed them the thing and it was tailored and customized, right, that's that's the key thing. You, you, you show them something that's not relevant to them, you're going to blow it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's, that's really interesting. Um, and it, it really fits with the mentality of PLG. You want to put the user in the driver's seat and you being in the passenger seat and being there to help, not really confront or just one size fits all. And I think that's that's really, you're, you're gonna be able to qualify anyway because some users will already be in your product. Some users, you'll already have some data about them, about the size of their company, the industry. That's all data that you have as a SaaS business that's going product led. So I, I think really shifting the mentality to okay, well, I'm not going to give you a presentation that's going to bore you for 50 minutes. Why don't you just play around with the product? And I, I'll be there if you have questions, if you have questions about premium offers, about enterprise contracts, about how can we expand. So really working alongside the user, I think that's a great like thought that you, you brought out that is really important for, for PLG sales because most of the qualification, most of the value points are, are given to the user prior to your conversation. So really putting the product in their hands and being in the passenger seat, I think it's a, it's a great analogy. Um, to go a bit deeper on that, because I know that you've been vocal about EQ in PLG sales and the mentality. And when we spoke before in another call, you mentioned mindfulness and well-being. I want to get your point of view on how the story for you of, of being more and more mindful and working on your emotional intelligence and how that ties back, in my opinion, really strongly to product-led sales. Yeah, well, you know, it's everything. I mean, taking care of yourself is is everything, right? Like, I, I you know, we've always heard these statements which, uh, which were focused on, like, you know, wisdom and these sort of things, like, uh, you know, health is wealth or health is everything. It's true. It's true, right? So, I mean... You know, the obvious is if you're sick or you're depressed or you're this and that, and all those systems, mind and, and body and soul are all the same thing. Um, I know we don't talk about that as much in our Western society, but, you know, it's, it's not new, folks. Um, and it's actually uh, a limitation. Yeah. Uh, 
but without getting into you know too deep into that but you know from from just at a high level like you're in sales you're going to you're going to have to deal with those ups and downs right all the time um you're going to have to deal with uh, the rejection right and then the other thing is like if your mind is in the gutter or you're not feeling great you're not going to be able to focus right um in in you or you're going to just check boxes you know i remember there's been times um in the last couple of years you know especially around covid where you know i was struggling uh just across the board you know with a lot of different things i was approaching 40 and you know, had a lot of shitty uh failures in the startup world and wasn't taking care of myself so i was you know working my ass off for you know <laughs> almost two decades and didn't didn't think about myself right and um and i there was a time where i hit a wall and i could barely like literally barely get out of bed you know for a substantial amount of time obviously there were a lot of factors involved right it's not just one but that's life life is not a you know a oh i'm going i know we like to talk about oh let's separate work from ourselves you know it's bullshit right um yeah. my dad's an industrial psychologist um and you know i can assure you that after growing up with him t- coming home and telling stories and stuff it's very it's impossible. There is no separation, right? So, yeah. so yeah, you know, like being a great salesperson is all about um, you know, working really hard, being able to keep that sort of even keel, um, uh, you know, sort of a state of being, right? But then also like staying super organized, right? Like the best sales pe- people I know, they have every block of time mapped out on their schedule, right? Um, your your schedule is your lifeline in sales, right? You know when you're prospecting, you know when you're following up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're not healthy and you can't take care of yourself and your brain's in the gutter and your mental health sucks and, you know, et cetera, or you drank way too much the night before or whatever else you were doing, um, you know, you're just not going to wake up and, and crush it the way you would, you know, do if you weren't. So I'm not yeah. against partying and all that. I Trust me, I've done my my share of it but you know guilty too guilty too but i know i think i think it's important to talk about it because it, it really it really links well to product led sales we we see the best sales reps and the best sales sales leaders at product led growth shifting their mentality from a like car salesman to really an advocate a consultant working alongside users and i think working on yourself and your mindfulness and your self awareness will increase your emotional intelligence that you can apply to your sales conversations. Okay, well, that's that's super interesting. Uh, but I think it's time to wrap up. You're, you're a busy person and you have other, other stuff to do. Like any respectful podcast, I need to ask you a quick fire question. So I'm going to ask you four, four quick uh, questions. You, you answer them as quick as you can. Ready? Okay, go for it. All right. What have I not asked you that you think I should ask? What have you not asked me that I think you should ask? Um, I think that... Maybe like, how do you get through the challenging moments in your career and life? Shoot. How do you get through the challenging moments in your career and life? Uh, a focus on spirituality, you know, mm-hmm. life and in, inside game. Amazing. Which CEO or founding team do you look up to and why? You know, I, I just got to say that I love my buddy uh jim payne brian atwood in the feast jamal at mopub obviously i go back um they changed my life they taught me a lot about leadership and running a great organization amazing what's the most underrated tool growth technique or skill for sales in your opinion um the most is uh relationship building and uh you know empathy agree agree uh something final one something you wish you knew when you were 20 that it was all going to work out and that there was always darkest before dawn. Amazing. I love it. Well, thank you, George. I really enjoyed the chat. Hope our listeners will, will do too. If people want to learn more about Reprise, they can go to getreprise.com. And what's the best way to reach you? Yeah, LinkedIn. Just check me out, Soto Ventures. So forward slash Soto Ventures. All right. Amazing. Thanks, George. Have a good one. Thank you.